And this is important because we don't ever want to forget that God does have involvement. Now, we're not Calvinists. We're going to get to that in a little bit. We don't believe that, that no one has a free will to choose what they do and what they don't do. But that being said, God does lead, he guides, he directs, he has a plan, and he, he, he has a way of making things happen the way that he wants them to happen. And oftentimes it's through using, lifting up or bringing down certain people. And uh, he, God knows the beginning from the end. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything, right? So sometimes it's difficult when you really try to, try to dig into it. And this is one of the flaws of Calvinists is that they, they think about it too hard. And, and in their human mind, they, they come up with a really flawed conclusion of, of essentially not having a free will. But it's, it's hard to understand a God that exists outside of time. It's hard to comprehend that because we're stuck in time. There is no time for God. I mean, yesterday is just as real as tomorrow for God as far as, as, far as the whole thing's concerned, the whole time frame. And, and it's all just on a, a plot. It's hard to imagine what it's like to exist out of time. We're stuck at that constraint. So um, I don't try to spend too much time you know, thinking about something that I won't be able to understand anyways. It is what it is. <coughs> and if God wanted us to really understand all the details about that, he'd tell us about it. So we're just going to go with what God gave us and just have faith in that. But anyways, I'm, I'm already kind of digressing here. My point is I, I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate, and what God's doing here is he's demonstrating all of his involvement. He says, I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood. I led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and he did. I mean, you could see that in the story, that he called him out. He told him where to go. He was leading him. He was guiding him where he went. Abraham didn't know the plan, but God led him all the way. And he says here, it says, and multiply the seed, which he did. And I love that it says here, he multiplied the seed first, and then he says, and gave him Isaac. Because the multiplication of the seed wasn't just one physical son and Isaac or two. It's not the, the multiplication isn't, well, he had Ishmael and now he's got Isaac, so he's multiplied and has two. No. The multiplication of his seed are, are all of the, the descendants. Not, I, just, I believe it's not just of even through Isaac and through Israel. It's all the spiritual seed that, that <coughs> were a result of Abraham. You know, he's known as the father of faith. And, and, and because of his faith and his belief and his moving forward when God asks him to and God calls him out and him obeying God's command, uh, as a result, many people have their lives changed from, from Abraham, one person obeying and heeding God's command. And what an impact, that, that multiplication of that seed that just continues on for generations. <coughs> 